Now it's time for some financial mathematics. Like this, you mean to tell me you don't know how to manage your money? Uh, this is actually something that is really important. Um, obviously, I'm supposed to tell you that everything is, but this one is actually much more important than a lot of the other ones. This one can actually help you in real life. Um, and I can tell you this without a doubt, this is a true story. When my wife and I were actually looking for a loan for our house. Um, I actually went to the bank and with them, I was able to bring my calculator, my little TI Inspire. And what I was able to do is calculate things so much faster than the person at the bank, actually, because they were just looking at, well, what if we change the interest rate to this and made this many payments? What would it cost? I could figure it out within seconds. I was like, hold on, it would be this. And they're like, well, you really know your stuff. I was like, nah, I just know how to cheat. So I'm going to teach you how to cheat. So this thing called compound interest, what does that mean? I mean, normally this is related to you investing money or money being invested in some way. It could be depreciating or be appreciating, as we say. In other words, money can go up in value or down. Normally, we're going to be considering it going up in value. So here in compound interest, we're going to be investing money. You're going to get money then based on some interest rate. So it's going to grow based on some percent. But you're going to get it calculated a certain number of times per year. They're going to calculate. They're going to make that calculation uh, a certain number of times per year. And the question is then how much will you have at the end? The reason I wanted to define it like this is just so I can start defining some important variables, some words we're going to be using. So if you invest money, that amount you initially invest, we're going to call that the present value. So that's the initial amount you actually put in. We'll call it present value, like right now you put in that. Uh, it's based on an interest rate. So that's going to be called the nominal interest rate. That's going to be the annual interest rate as a percent going to get calculated a number of times per year. We're going to call that the compounding periods per year. Okay, so if it's, uh, for example, if it's uh, done, you know, two times per year, you know, that could be biannually. For example, some people like to call it biannually. Oops, with an A. L-O-Y. For example, it could be done um, four, uh, four times per year. What's that called? That's called quarterly. So in case you see these words, quarterly, uh, they could say obviously uh, 12 times per year. You know what that's called? Monthly. So in case you see these terms, you know, you could have 52 times per year. I think you get the idea, right? That's uh, weekly because it's 52 weeks in a year. So something like this. You know, there's different words they can use, but these are the compounding periods per year. How many times they make this calculation? And then how much will you have? That's called the future value. So these are the different terms we're going to be using. They're going to be important. Okay, Once you understand these terms, the rest becomes really straightforward. And again, you can sort of cheat. So I'll show you the cheating way. Well, I'll show you the non-cheating way first. We'll do it with the, uh, the equation. I am, And the examples I'm going to show you, you can solve them both ways. You can solve them with the formula. This is from your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize it. Um, I like this t-shirt. Seriously, interesting. It's a, a slightly modified version of this. It looks almost the same. But see, it's because it's about interest. Haha, <laughs> so it's interesting. Uh, so here, FV is the future value. See that PV is present value. R is the nominal annual interest rate. It's what I just talked about, that interest rate as a percent. Now, the other weird thing that we have K. K is a number of compounding periods per year, and N is a number of years. And you even get this information here. This is also given on your data booklet. So you don't have to, or your formula booklet. You don't have to memorize that either. That's the good news. So let's do this example here with this equation. So if I want to have a million U.S. dollars in my account in 30 years, okay? Um, now, I invest it in an account that pays a nominal annual interest rate of 7.1% per year. Turns out that's actually, that's actually really high. Uh, it's compounded monthly. How much do I need to invest now? So this is going to be, we're just going to put in this equation here. So key thing is to figure out, first of all, you tell your examiner when you have a question like this on an exam, you make sure to write down that equation to tell them, I know what I'm doing. Or at least I know what I'm trying to do, right? So you can do this, right? So you just put in the equation. I'm rewriting it, even though it sounds boring. There we go. It's important then, I think, to try to write down what your different letters are going to be. So what's FV in this case? You know, we need to know what's PV. 
what's n, what's k, and what's r. So if we figure out these, we know what to put in. I like to do it this way so it's easier, so later on I don't make a mistake halfway through the question. So if I want to have a million US dollars in 30 years, what do you think that million is? Is it future or present value? I hope it makes sense. It's future value. So that's my million here. Six zeros. There we go. Present value. Hmm. I invest in how much money do I need to invest now? Ooh, that's actually what I want. So I make sure. So do you see, I'm going to just call that X. It's the thing I'm looking for. Then I have N, the number of years. That's going to be 30. Now, this is interesting. The comp K is the compounding periods per year. It's compounded monthly. If it's monthly, it's done 12 times per year. And the annual interest rate is 7.1%. So now I've got everything I need to just put it into my calculator. So let's give this a try here. Let's see if we can do it. Um, whoops. So I'm going to attempt to do it now. So let's see here. Put in maybe blue. I'll just put in the number. So F fee. So I've got a million equals present value, which I don't know. I'll call it X times 1 plus what's r? r is 7.1 over 100 times k. That I can do in my head. I just add two zeros to it, but you can figure that out, right? 100 times 12. You can use your calculator if you're not sure. Times k to the power, uh, to, sorry, to the power of kn. k is 12, n is 30. Okay, so 12 times 30. Now there's a number of ways of doing this from here. You could actually stop here and say, well, how do I solve this? You can use your calculator. All right, so I'll open up my trusty calculator, open up a calculator page here. I mean, I can figure out some different pieces of it. Right? I can say, well, what's 12 times 30? Oh, that's 360. See what I mean? And I can figure out these little different pieces. Uh, one way to do it is to just figure out this gross part to the right here. We could figure out what all this is. So for example, let's say I do a bracket right here and I say, all right, what's one plus, and I put my little fraction here put my little fraction symbol here, and I say 7.1 over, I say 1,200, and I'm going to do that whole thing. I move to the right, to the right, and say to the power of, and here I can say if I wanted, you know, 12 times 30. Oops. So for example, I'm just figuring out, can you see I'm just figuring out the right side here? I press enter. So I get that number there. Can you see that? So now I get this whole number. Um, then what you can do is if you recognize that, you can get x by itself. To get x by itself, you have to do this whole thing divided by that mess. That's how you get to it. So I can do 1 million divided by my last answer. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You can just call up the answer or you can just scroll up and say enter. And I got my answer, which is 119586. 119, oops. One one nine five eight six. Is that right? Just double check. I did it right. One one nine five eight six. Yep. So this right here is the amount I would have to invest. So that's how you can solve this.